Thomas, we're sitting here in your home in Merthyr, surrounded by what I would call a Hall of Fame <coughs> Welsh boxers. Well, all that's left of them, we uh, don't Some of the best Welsh champions I think we've had. You know each of them personally, presumably? Oh, very well, all of them. Well, the man sitting on your left is a particularly interesting chap, Billy Einan. You're aged 84, Bill. Yeah. You began boxing in 1912. Yeah. Can you remember those early days? I uh, remember my first fight in Merthyr, uh, five shillings purse. I won in the first round, <laughs> going out landed now with the money, because I was only getting ten bob down the bloody pit then, see, for a week. So I just five bob, so going out right now, as I was out the door. Billy, come here, you want me to seconds, yeah? Oh, how much? Two bob each. So I had a shell for my first fight. <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to turn professional, though? Was it just the money? Yes, I'd love a boxing, oh yes. And, and the money, see? The five shillings and the ten bombs. That's the most you're getting then. But you're fighting every Saturday night, and you can fight every Saturday night, providing they win, you can have a fight every Saturday night. There's a place in Merthyr, see, Wonderland, like a place called the Wonderland in Merthyr. You were the bantamweight champion of Wales in 1919, but because you started before the war, you must have known all the great Welsh boxers, the Jim Driscolls, the Jimmy Wiles. Yeah, yeah. What can you remember about them? Well, I remember Jimmy Driscoll fighting Welsh when I was very young. When Driscoll got disqualified through butting Welsh all around the ring with his head. Was it, we always think of Driscoll as the great classical yeah, fighter, yeah, was classical he? Boxer. Oh, yes, he was a classical boxer, but Welsh was the best. Why? Well, he was, he, well, he was, he was, walking, he was winning every round, easy. And Driscoll had the needle, see? So he lost his head and he put his head <laughs> on him, butted him all around the ring, got disqualified. But you've got a particular association with Jim Driscoll, haven't you? I used to live with him in Cardiff and boxed, and he used to box with him when he, when he was, was watching the fight he do for the championship. I was his sparring partner in uh, Stedford Street in Cardiff, and uh, in one of, one of the rounds, he, he, butted, he, he hit me in the eye and he blinded me. Blinded me? Blinded me, right. I saw artificial eye, this last 58 years. What sort of gloves were you using? Uh, four rounds, that time. But your rabbit skin's not eaten. What effect did that have? Well, yeah, no, bare fist, you could say bare fist, wasn't it? He sounds, the way you describe him, as a bit of a dirty fighter rather than the, the pure mm. classicist. Mm. Well, 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 I wouldn't say. Well, he was, a, he was the classical boxer, but he was the dirty box boxer as well, see. When he died, he had a massive funeral in Oh, yes, I uh, uh. Oh, he, he, he was idle, idle in Cardiff. He had the Cardiff people behind him, didn't he? Billy Idol, 84 years of age. You were the man who started boxing in 1912 with Freddie Welsh in the age of Jim Driscoll. Would you say that they would get on well against today's fighters or not? Oh, yes. They'd be outstanding. To beat them all. Why would they do that? Well, I don't know. They're a different class, a different class of boxing altogether. There's one or two, there's one or two throwbacks now, like Winston or something like that. There's not many like the old timers now boxing today. Looking back on your career, would you do it all again? No. Why? Well, I don't know. It's, I think, well, I think it's a bloody mug's game, I said. <laughs> <laughs> get yourself knocked about for what? Yeah. And especially today, you only get to get a fight every one, one every six months. In the old days, you could get a fight every Saturday night. Oh, well, you haven't got them. You haven't got the number, have you? I mean, you say you win ten fights today, you're chapter England. Eddie Thomas, it's been a fascinating experience talking to these great old boxers who represented Wales over the last 65 years in the professional ring. How would you assess their contribution? Well, they've done everything. In those bad days in the 30s, they helped all old people and injured people along and uh, putting money into the soup kitchens, you know, when people needed it. Well, when I was a boy, that's all they talked about with this man on my left, Bill Einan, and he was my god, my father's god before me. And uh, I think... All these lads here tonight, I'm calling them lads, but they were boxing men. Each and every one was a Welsh champion, and I think if they were around today, they'd be at least a British champion. And I wish I was managing them. But Bill Ayman has got a record as well. He boxed in front of 200,000 troops on the hills around Salonica in the 1914-18 war. And I think that's the biggest gate in history. Better than the gladiators in Rome, Bill. No, I'm a better. It must have been something that... <laughs> and the only disappointment I've had in my life, and everybody in Merthyr, was that Bill got robbed of a title fight, of the British title with Jim Higgins in the National Sporting Club years ago, because of Danny Blackcock shouting the odds. 
shouting the bets. And that wasn't known in the National Sporting Club in those days. You dare not shout no. any bets or even use bad language. You had to clap between the rounds. They still do that, man. And uh, which was fabulous. And that was way of life then, before the Boxing Board of Control came into being. And I'd like to say again, the Welsh Area Council was the first in Great Britain. And now we've got an amateur council, which I'm not very happy with. Well, gentlemen, all eight of you have been a great credit both to your profession and to your sport. And thank you very much for talking to us.